So good afternoon. Thank everybody for joining us again. I think we've reached critical mass, so we'll get started with today's webinar. Uh, this is a webinar presented in conjunction with the National League of Cities by Build America Mutual, and we're here with a guest speaker from J.P. Morgan uh, Securities as well. We're going to be talking about the municipal bond market and particularly implications for cities. Uh, we know that there's a, a broad range of participants in today's call. We're going to hope to uh, both help people who are new to the market as well as those with some more experience understand some of the things that we expect to see in the coming year. Um, and some of the things why it's uh, particularly important for city leaders to be aware of the market and work it into your conversations with your other representatives in Washington. That's a, it's a major uh, priority for NLC, has been for, for many years as part of their focus on infrastructure financing. And one of the things we hope you'll uh, walk away with today is uh, more understanding of why. To get us through the conversation today, I'm very honored to uh, be joined by Peter DeGroote. Peter is the Managing Director and Head of Municipal Bond Research and Strategies at J.P. Morgan. Uh, he's been in the market for and been one of the top-ranked municipal bond strategists for more than 10 years, according to uh, surveys from institutional investors, as well as Smith's research and gradings. Uh, he publishes daily and weekly market analytics and commentary for issuers and investor clients, as well as uh, adv advising the investor clients on risk and performance management in the marketplace. What's uh, particularly uh, exciting about Peter's work is that it's some of the more original research in the marketplace, as you'll see in a few minutes. Uh, he's got some great insights into the nature of the investor base, which I think uh, will be really actionable for the issuers on today's call as you're thinking about how to position your uh, bonds and, and access capital for your essential infrastructure projects. I'm Mike Stanton. I run man I manage corporate strategy and communications for Build America Mutual. BAN is a bond insurance company. We've worked with just about 6,000 issuers uh, across the country, school districts, cities, counties, sewer districts, and we've uh, helped finance more than $130 billion of municipal bonds for essential infrastructure, again, for all of their projects. We've been a longtime partner with the National League of Cities going back to 2012, and we are NLC's preferred provider of bond insurance. So we're really happy to be here today and to uh, always to work with NLC on these issues. So this first slide gives you a sense of why this topic is so important to cities. The first chart on the left-hand side is a chart of public construction spending. It shows how much money is spent on infrastructure by the federal government and how much is spent by state and local governments. For people on this call, it will be no surprise to see that more than 90% of the construction spending in the country on infrastructure is done at the state and local level. We talk about infrastructure a lot at the federal level. We actually do infrastructure at the state and local level, and cities are a massive part of that. That's data directly from the Census Bureau. The right-hand side makes the link between that construction spending and the municipal bond market. Again, so this is an eight-year trend. You can see that state and local governments spent just under $3 trillion on infrastructure uh, over that period. And just over $2 trillion of that was financed with new money municipal bond sales. So, you know, some of the rest of that gap comes from, it might be passed along grants uh, from other levels of government. It might be pay-as-you-go financing out of your operating budget. But the vast majority of construction spending and infrastructure investment is made possible by the municipal bond market. Without the market, uh, that would be either much more expensive and, and therefore much more limited. This uh, chart, again, looking back over the last 10 years, you can see that there has been a very consistent uptrend uh, in municipal bond uh, financed investment and in infrastructure. Again, this chart just shows new money sales by uh, cities and all and local governments across the country every year. And you can see it, it uh, has a very clear upward slope through 2021. It's been down slightly in, in 2022. 2023 will probably end up about flat to 2022, so remaining at that very elevated level. But there are two things to take away here. One is to show that uh, municipal bonds, uh, the municipal bond market has very strong capacity to finance additional infrastructure investment and has done so over the last 10 years. And the other thing, again, is to highlight just how much uh, cities, local governments, school districts have answered the call and met the need for an infrastructure investment in their local communities long before IIJA, long before IRA, long before the federal government started supporting this market, cities and, and local governments were there. One of the things that I think uh, Peter will talk about is, is what to think about in the future. Uh, will there be a pivot? Will there be even more local investment hand in hand with some of these government programs? Uh, but that's something we can get through. Um, one other thing I'll highlight on this slide is uh, voters are often called upon to directly support these local initiatives. There are referendums where voters vote on the bond uh, offerings. 
support for capital investment by voters remains very strong. I think uh, the numbers for 2023 will end up around 70% of all referendums were passed by voters. Um, and I think that was about $60 billion. And since it was an off layer for elections, that number was even below average. So it was still a very strong year. Um, there's a lot of citizen support. They understand the needs for these projects. This chart uh, starts to bridge over to understanding where the demand for uh, for uh, bonds comes from. And again, this draws on research that Peter's been uh, pioneering in terms of identifying um, the new growth in what we call separately managed accounts. Those are professionally advised accounts, but they are ultimately uh, investments by individuals. Um, and we'll, he will talk a little more about where that money's coming from, but you can see uh, the SMA business has been growing. Mutual funds are a large part of this. Households owning bonds directly remain a major part of the market. Individuals calling up their broker or going online and buying bonds, uh, almost one in five of all bonds are held that way. And then other financial institutions also play an important role. So, you know, just a couple of takeaways to, to frame up the rest of the conversation. Again, municipal bonds are the crucial financing tools for cities. Uh, without the, a vibrant municipal bond market, city leaders will have much more constrained uh, fiscal decision making and much less of an ability to invest in the projects your residents and stakeholders need. Uh, it has ample capacity to continue to support increased investment in the, those areas. School finance is something to think about importantly because the federal government doesn't really help with capital investments at schools. That's done at the local level. Um, as we mentioned, with IIJA and IRA rolling out, there's going to be a need for matching funds to unlock federal grants. That money can be raised with the sale of municipal bonds. Um, the federal tax exemption is the key driver of demand for municipal bonds. The vast majority of municipal bonds are sold on a tax exempt basis, which means that interest payments are not taxable to the investor who collects them. That's a unique investment product. Nothing else is quite like it and is a major driver of demand. That's something that Congress could take away um, and or constrain. They uh, typically look at it when they're doing major tax bills and consider whether they should make changes. Um, that's something that will likely not be on the table for 2024 but will be a major issue after the next election in 2025. So you as local leaders, as you're engaging with NLC and lobbying and other uh, outreach efforts, please keep that in mind because it's something that uh, Congress needs to be reminded of the importance of this market. And so with that, I'm going to hand off to Peter um, and ask him to talk a little bit about some of the observations he has about the coming year and particularly how that uh, may impact you as city leaders when you're thinking about um, uh, how, you know, the types of advice you get from your professionals and the types of bonds you may sell. Thank you, Michael. A very good uh, entree into uh, our, our topic today. And as, as Michael said, uh, you know, 70 percent of the financing for a state uh, for city projects occurs in this municipal bond market. And um, it is a, a market that uh, I, I live and breathe in uh, every day. And we think that 2024, uh, you'll see very fertile ground for borrowing capital, issuing bonds in the municipal bond space. And the essential feature in uh, that reception, that strong reception that we're expecting in the municipal bond market for your offerings is our economics call. And, uh, you know, uh, Chairman Powell uh, actually went a long way in, I think, moving this along uh, yesterday in uh, Chairman Powell, uh, as well as the rest of the committee, uh, went a long way in, in moving this along for us uh, yesterday. Um, our view is that uh, growth is that both growth, inflation, uh, in, uh, unemployment. Our view is this all begins to trend down as we enter into 2024. That enables the Fed to do what it said it would do uh, yesterday, right? Uh, which uh, was an implied uh, easing of 125 basis points next year from the Fed. So uh, our view is that the Fed is able to cut interest rates, cut the Fed funds rate by 25 basis points beginning in June, and then another 100 basis points in the second half of next year. That's wonderful, right? That's a, a direct correlation to your borrowing costs in the municipal bond space. And key to that on this page is you see in the middle of the, the uh, matrix in the lower portion of, of the screen, we're expecting a half of 1% growth in GDP in the second and third quarters of next year. Now, uh, 
note that uh, that's not negative, but uh, it is certainly close, right, uh, to sort of the boundary line between a growth and contraction. In our view, the Fed is able to masterfully, and, and again, Powell expressed confidence in this yesterday, is able to sort of masterfully uh, engineer this soft landing for the economy. Expectation is that by the fourth quarter of next year, and specifically given the impetus in the economy as drawn from that, what we expect to be 125 basis points of easing next year in capital market borrowing costs, we start to see the economy trend up again at uh, you know under one percent, but still turning the quarter in the in, turning the corner in the fourth quarter of next year, increasing uh, just slightly uh, in that in that final quarter of the year. What enables that is you see CPI dropping from what we expect to see about a two point core C, uh, rather the Fed's core PCE measure, right? which is, as I'm sure you know, the Fed's favorite measure for inflation. We see that dropping from uh, a peak of 2.6% in this current quarter to about 2.3% next year. Again, an an essential sort of point in allowing the Fed to uh, cut rates. Mike, if we can go to the next slide. So with that, again, uh, expectation is that there will be ample opportunity for uh, cities to be able to issue debt in the municipal bond market, and they'll come at very attractive yields relative to what we're seeing in uh, the current year current year borrowing. So we're looking for next year's issuance of about $400 billion, which is a bit higher than the 375 or so that we expect to see full year in uh, 2023. We think that, that not, not only do you see additional issuance, But we also think that those levels, again, the borrowing costs, the levels for those bonds, the yield on those bonds, the coupons that you pay investors on those bonds will actually drop on a year over year basis. And part of the reason why we think that yields are going to drop is because this net supply in the municipal bond market will be supportive again in 2024 relative to uh, what we've seen in in prior years. And what a net supply metric really is, is the amount of new issue capital against, so the, the amount of new issue bonds, right? Bonds issued for capital projects relative to the reinvestment capital that investors have in their hand to buy those bonds. So we think that next year there is 15 billion more investment capital than there is bonds available for folks to purchase. Now that should have a, a should have a, a sort of gravitational pull down on yields. So you have two things working for you. One, you have the Fed that's dropping rates by, in our view, again, at a funds level, 170, 125 basis points, which by the way, today, the 10-year treasury is about at a 395 uh, by Next year, we're expecting that rate to drop to to a 375. And based on the context of the Fed's comments yesterday, that number may be coming lower, so maybe closer to to a 350. So that those are all all in bond rates at the U.S. Treasury yield levels. If this sort of scenario plays out in the municipal bond market, you will get a larger a decrease on a relative basis. In municipal bond yields, so your cost of capital, right, uh, than um, than the treasury bond market. So, uh, should be some really uh, uh, interesting opportunities for you to project finance through the municipal bond market next year. And on the bottom left of this slide, I'm going to point out uh, January and February of next year. You see those uh, blue bars in that bottom quadrant there, that uh, those represent the net supply for both of those months. So for example, that negative 8 billion in January is our estimate for additional investment capital relative to the amount of bonds in the market. So uh, taken in total that January and February, we're looking for about 20 billion more investment capital than there are bonds to buy. Again, like any other project, a product rather, it's a supply demand market. 
demand will be, in our view, $20 billion more uh, than the amount of product available. What will that do? That will drop your cost of capital. That'll bring more issuers, more investors to the market than there are bonds available to purchase. Now, we would Peter, advise you, that- Peter, could you maybe take a step back and just like explain what is that net investment capital? How, where are you getting that number from and, and how, how are you able to project it so well? Sure. So uh, in essence, that net supply is the amount of new issue financing. So uh, not the amount of total issuance, but the amount of issuance for new capital projects. So for example, a current refunding would not enter into that particular calculation. But if, an, uh, if a, a city was to build a bridge, extend any infrastructure projects, that, that is, would land into the new money category. We expect investors to have more capital from maturing new money. So coupon payments based on the current bonds they own and maturities from the current bonds they own, which in the municipal bond space, because as you said, uh, municipals are a unique investment in that if investors are looking for tax exempt income, which uh, <laughs> would bring them to the municipal bond market, they tend to reinvest in the space because they can't buy a corporate bond or a treasury bond or mortgage backed bond if their investment objective is tax free income because that income stream is taxable. So this, there is a very high revisit rate in the municipal bond market. So you see very strong technicals, right? <clears throat> Meaning the market is very fertile, uh, is anticipating issuance. Investors show up to, buy, to buy these new, new project bonds, bringing the cost down because they have the money to do it. And we know that because those are the existing bonds. They're all public. We know the schedule for when those repayments are coming out. Absolutely. Yeah. So the, the magic part of this, right, is fig is trying to forecast the new money portion of issuance, which has gotten fairly staid over the last few years. So that's been a, an easier exercise. And uh, the, um, the, the real sort of concrete observable portion is what are the maturity payments? What are the coupon payments that are coming into investors' coffers, right, uh, to invest? So uh, we think it's that the market is particularly a fertile around that January, February period, and again in the summer, right? Uh, but uh, a, a time to potentially, uh, in terms of if, if you were planning an issuance in the, in the municipal bond market, a, a period of the year to maybe draw a red pen around is that September, October period. And that's because we're expecting the opposite of what we're forecasting for the beginning of the year. In that, in that period, there is a relative small amount of investor capital based on maturity payments and coupon payments relative to the amount of issuance we're expecting in the market over those two months. Part of the reason why that October net supply is so difficult at 12 billion more bonds than investor capital available is because issuers will typically try to squeeze their offerings into the market before events whether that's a Fed event, CPI, or in this case, the presidential election in 2024. So that period uh, could be particularly arduous in terms of trying to find enough investor capital to efficiently place your, your new money bonds. Uh, so just uh, moving forward, one of the essential fact, another essential factor, right? So uh, we said that our view that the Fed cuts rates 125 basis points next year uh, is uh, in, important to the markets because treasury yields, right, are the jumping off point for all other fixed income bonds in the U.S. bond market, including municipals. So if treasury yields were to decline, we actually see and historically have seen a multiplier effect in the municipal bond space in that lower treasury yields beget higher NAV prices in muni bond funds. Higher NAV prices in muni bond funds attract capital into those funds. So you have, not only do you have the base rates as established by treasuries going lower, but the additional investment in mutual funds allows for more or actually creates 
for capital investment in the municipal bond space. So lower yields and on a relative basis, more capital available to purchase your offerings in 2024, which by the way, we saw work in the opposite way in 2022. 2022, yields were rising. The pricing on bonds was falling. We had significant outflows in the space, as you could see right in that um, sort of, I'm hovering my cursor around Gen 22 and through the whole year. Those blue bars on that line are fund flows. And you could see that was a very, very difficult period to issue bonds in the market because you had all this capital leaving the market. The yellow line there, uh, it, trend line is treasury yields. So at the same time as capital was leaving the market, your base cost for borrowing, uh, for accessing securities in the, in the U.S. fixed income market, including municipal bonds, was rising. So flip that on its head next year. And, and we think it's a great opportunity for folks to tap the market while rate while base rates are going down and while investors have the capital to invest in the muni bond space. So let's um, move a little bit forward, just discussing a little bit about what Michael had mentioned, sort of the changing um, dynamics in terms of which investors are buying securities. Now, city bonds in particular, bonds that are backed by property, tax specifically, are very, very safe investments in the market, very highly rated. Investors know it. One of the most in, important support factors or, or groups that have capital supporting those very high quality products are ETF investors. Generally, ETFs will buy high quality products that are very available in the market, that trade frequently, that have, as we call it, good liquidity. That particular portion of the investment construct has been growing considerably over the last few years. I didn't point it out, but on the prior slide, we see about 11 billion, actually says nine on the slide today, it's up to 11, about 11 billion of inflows into ETFs this year, at the same time as municipal bond funds have lost about 25 billion. Uh, that particular group of investors and that investment construct has actually been trending well in terms of uh, the potential reception for your product. And if we go to the next slide, we see, and, and again, Michael referenced this in the beginning as well, another considerable, let's call it basket of capital in the municipal bond space and growing is the amount of capital that's currently held in separately managed accounts. So this particular portion, this particular investment construct today has got the highest amount of assets under management in the municipal bond market. These investors are primarily supporting the one to 10 year portion of the market and double A or better bonds. So uh, at least in terms of the credit from a credit quality ilk, these are the very investors that are buying your securities. That portion of the market, because of the consistent demand from these separately managed account folks, has traded at, well, um, let me express that a different way, has significantly decreased the borrowing cost for capital in the municipal bond market. To the extent you your deals, right, to the extent your bond deals can migrate into that one to 10 year portion of the market, you're able to take advantage of the very significant store of capital available from separately managed account investors. Now, as I said before, we do expect as the year moves on that we'll see open end inflows, but today, make no mistake about it, the capital, the the largest store of capital, the most significant amount of investment available for municipal bonds is in this higher quality one to 10 year portion of the market. It should be a focal point, a target for bond issuance for all the folks in the room. Just quickly, not to belabor the point too much, but as Michael said, the tax exemption in the municipal bond space allows for lower borrowing costs for municipal issuers. 
in the 10 year spot on the curve, the municipal yield is approximately, actually this morning was around 56% of the treasury bond yield. In the 30 year spot on the curve, the AA yield was about 80% of the treasury yield. So for the commensurate portions of the curve or maturities, municipal bond maturities, investors are piling into this one to 10 year or um, are piling into one to 10 year bonds, there, thereby basic supply and demand bringing down your cost of capital. We expect that to, uh, to continue as we uh, move through the year in 2024. So, uh, Michael, let's just move on, please. Uh, and one now, the essential factor in attracting folks to your bond offerings is the credit quality that continues to be strong and continues to give investors confidence to put capital available in the market. There are two reasons why investors buy your bonds. One, asset preservation slash capital preservation. So folks are hypersensitive to the credit underpinnings and the excellent job that you've done historically of managing your budgets, number one. Number two, they want tax exempt income, right? So the tax exempt income takes care of itself, right? In terms of your issuing into the municipal bond market. But these sort of statistics that you see here, and again, uh, in large part due to your ability to manage your budgets effectively, not only through boom periods, but all th also through uh, periods of potential lower revenue that we might be going into. But these statistics, again, front and center for, for investors. And uh, thankfully, there is positive credit momentum moving into next into 2024, which one might expect would be a year where revenues will be lower on a year-over-year -year basis, right, as the economy slows. Hopefully, like we do see this sort of uh, you know, this uptick by, by year end by virtue of easing of credit conditions. But uh, on a year-to-date basis through October, on average, municipal upgrades on a ratio basis were 3.5 times downgrades. That was it. Again, the stats very closely followed. So um, hopefully next year uh, we, we, we find a similar scenario. And then, uh, you know, one this uh, taking directly from uh, from you folks in terms of your 2023 fiscal year conditions of cities report uh, of in contrast to states. The anticipation of potential contraction in the economy in fiscal year 2023 brought about this very fiscally conservative behavior and very positive from a credit perspective in terms of municipal bond investors where uh, cities actually cut their spending on a relative basis uh, on uh, coming into 2023, only to find uh, as uh, you know, somewhat of a surprise to a lot of folks that general fund revenues actually increase for the year. So um, keep up the good work. Uh, you, you, you're doing your part. Thanks, Peter. This is a fantastic. And, you know, uh, just a couple of more notes. Uh, we'll just share our back guy. It kind of already laid out who BAM is. Again, we have a double A rating when BAM insurance is used. If your city is rated less than double A, your bonds will carry our double A rating. That is a, a reflection of increased credit quality. And as Peter noted, the higher the credit quality, the more de investor demand is, the lower the cost of, of borrowing. And again, when you lower the cost of borrowing, that means for the given dollar that you raise through taxes or other sources in your community, there's more dollars available to go directly into construction into building those projects. Um, you mentioned that we've uh, we've got about $100 billion of bonds outstanding. Uh, the largest piece of that is for school districts, just over a third. Cities and counties are the next biggest piece, 28% of that. And you can see all of the states that are, are the largest states and the states that are really investing in their infrastructure are the ones where we're most active. One thing that I would like to highlight is, an, is kind of another option uh, you may hear about in the coming year are debt service reserve fund insurance policies. They're sometimes called debt service reserve fund surety policies. In a lot of cases, an issuer sets aside money when they set, uh, sell bonds in a cash account up front to make a payment to investor if the, if the issuer is unable to make the payment for any reason over the life of the bonds. That account is often sized at either half of a full year's debt service payment or one full year's debt service payment. 
One thing you can uh, consider doing is replacing the cash in that fund with an insurance policy. So instead of drawing money out of an account where it's sitting, not making a great interest return, you can call on the insurance policy to make that payment. BAM offers that, other insurance companies do as well. And one of the things that's been highlighted this year and just a week ago, the state of Connecticut did a major deal. Um, they had a uh, bond issue from 2009 that had a almost $400 million cash reserve fund associated with it. They replaced that cash reserve fund with a DSRF insurance policy from BAM. They were able to withdraw that money, and they used that money for a really interesting new use. They uh, used it to seed an investment fund that's going to provide grants to poorer uh, children in the state when they reach the age of 18. They call it the baby bonds. And every new child born in Connecticut whose birth is covered by the Medicaid program, so the family has to have Medicaid insurance before the child is born, Every child whose, whose birth is covered gets an account in this program and has $3,000 deposited in their name. When that child reaches the age of 18, they can withdraw that money plus whatever interest it earns over the, over the uh, following years, and they can use it for a, a list of uh, approved purposes. It can be used uh, to pay for uh, tuition for college or trade school. It can be used to buy a home in Connecticut. It can be used to invest in a Connecticut business. So it's a really a, a kind of an interesting program designed to address these generational wealth transfer issues that uh, that are part of why inequality remains high. Um, and the way that was made possible was they had this money sitting from an old bond issue, sitting in a reserve account, not earning uh, the kind of return that it should be. They were able to replace that and seed this new program. So something to think about uh, as you're looking for capital in the coming year. One other thing to talk about is uh, green bonds remain a topic of discussion in the marketplace. Uh, they vary a bit uh, around the country, but green bonds are bonds that are uh, recognized and verified as going to environmentally positive projects. So that can be uh, clean energy. It can be energy efficiency upgrades to your buildings. It can be sustainable water and wastewater management. Um, and BAM is a verifier of green bonds. If you use our insurance, we will review whether they qualify for green bonds. And what that really is, is an investment in transparency. And so it's a message to the market and a message to investors that these bonds are being used to finance projects in line with international standards. And that can, again, can help attract additional buyers to your transaction. The last thing I'll mention is um, that BAM credit profiles are also an investment in transparency we make. We uh, publish a three-page credit report on every transaction we insure. It's available for free on our website. Feel free to log on to buildamerica.com slash credit profiles. Um, and you can, you both as a city leader, you can see if we've insured your bonds, you can see what uh, your financial condition looks like. You can look up your neighbors, things like that. Again, helping to give investors confidence uh, in the uh, fiscal status of the uh, of the cities and other uh, issuers where they're investing. So again, we'll uh, we'll open the floor. If there are any questions, please enter them in the chat or the Q and A. Otherwise, uh, we will be emailing uh, a link to the replay of this webinar as well as to the slides. Uh, and we thank everybody for uh, for taking part today. Have a great holiday season and uh, good luck financing your projects in the coming year. We think there's going to be a lot going on. We uh, both, uh, you know, Peter and, and we uh, look forward to uh, to assisting in that investment. That's uh, that's why we do this. <laughs> so. Thank you again, Peter, for taking the time today and have a great, uh, great end of the year. Thank you. And thank you, folks, for listening.